coach, we need to make special mention of before we go further in service.
Just give me a blessing just to learn this song for you. There's a lighthouse on a hillside that overlooks life sea. When I'm tossed, it sends out a light that I might see. And the light that shines in darkness now and safely lead us all. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, my 
ship would be no more. Everybody that lives about her, they say tear that old lighthouse down. No, the big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use of it standing round. And then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw that old light. It was a light from that old lighthouse that stands there on the hill. And and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him For Jesus is the lighthouse And from the rocks of sin He has shown the light around me That I If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where would this ship be? And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For Jesus is the lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, He has shown the light around me that I can clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me where this should be. Thank you. Uh, they asked us to sing another song today, so if y'all don't mind, we'd like to sing another song.
We were asked to do another song today too, so while they're while they're up here daughter, we'll just do that. That's right. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Amen. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, <coughs> and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. And your feet shod with the preparation of the God's peace. Amen. Amen. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with a prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching their food with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. 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 The time of a baby dedication is an important time when you give your child back to God and then thank Him for the overwhelming opportunity that you've been given to mold that child into the man that someday he will become. There's a lot that will take place in Jack's life that we know nothing of this morning. But it is our heart's desire to have him prepared for whatever life may bring his way. Amen. In order to set Jack up for success in life, he's going to need some things that we are going to address at this time. Yes. First of all, Jack is going to need both his father and his mother. So your marriage needs to take priority for your son's sake. Amen. Amen. Ashley and Ryan, do you promise before God and these witnesses to make your marriage a priority from this day forward so long as you both shall live? Jack's going to need a church family. That is backing him and bathing him in prayer and a place for him to hear the gospel. So Ashley and Ryan, do you promise this morning to raise Jack in church to make sure that when he reaches the age of accountability that he will know the truth of the gospel? Third, Jack needs godly examples in his life. Church, Ashley and Ryan have promise to raise their son Jack around you so if I call on you this morning I want you to stand and answer my question and then remain standing Gerald and Christine Green will you promise before God and these witnesses to live a sold out surrendered life to the Lord Jesus Christ as an example to little Jack. We do. John Fraser, or excuse me, I'm sorry about that. John Allen, <laughs> Sherry Allen. Will you promise to pray for this young family every time you kneel down? and talk to our God above. Deacons, their wives, please stand. Will you give an oath this morning to make sure 
that there is always a church here for little Jack to learn about Jesus. Jaden, Levi, Bryce, Brady, Colby, Ryan. As older peers of Jack, will you promise to set a good example to him as older boys in this church have been to you? Ashley and Ryan, you see these men and women standing up and these boys standing up in front of you, part of your church, and you've heard their promises. And this morning, as pastor of this church, I'd like to make you a promise. I promise before God and every witness in this place to preach whatever God lays on my heart, to love you, and to be here for you until the time that God may move me. You have my word. I want you all to know that me and my family are behind you and your family. Your church family is behind you. Now I'm going to ask the rest of the church if they would to stand up to extend their hands this way as we go to the Lord in prayer and anoint this family with prayer. Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord God, we have seen your Holy Spirit move in this place. And God, we're thankful for that. And Lord, right now we lift up to you, uh, little Jack. And God, we just pray, God, that, you, uh, that you'll uh, anoint him from on high the way, God, only you can. Now we pray, Lord, this morning for a hedge of protection around about him for all the days that he may live upon this earth. And Father God, we pray for Ryan and for Ashley, Lord God, that they'd be the uh, parents that they've promised here to be, God. I pray for each one uh, that's made a solemn oath before all of these witnesses, God, uh, that You'd allow us, God, to keep the promises that we've made. Uh, Father God, we love You this morning. God, we thank You and we praise You. For it's in Your precious and holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. amen. At this time, I'm going to present them. Uh, if I, can keep, I can't keep my head together this morning. Y'all have to forgive me with a certificate of dedication in Jack's first Bible. Thank you so much. Love you. Now, I know it's late, and I understand that. Uh, but I got a message I got to share with you very quickly, okay? If you're all right with it, say amen. amen. All right, it sounds like everybody's okay. Uh, if you got somewhere you need to be, you can go, I guess. But uh, I'm not going to preach long. I didn't hear an amen on that. <laughs> Y'all didn't believe it. Uh, this morning, I'm going to wind up the, the series that I've been preaching on uh, uh, having that heavenly home. And, uh, and as I do that... I got, I got to get myself together this morning. Uh, but as I do that, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to understand where we're coming from this morning. We, we've talked uh, over the past few weeks about the importance of a marriage and having a heavenly home, the importance the man plays, the importance uh, uh, that the woman plays in having a heavenly home, the importance of love in a heavenly home. Uh, but this morning, I, I'm going to... Uh, leave you with one more, uh, one more point to that, that series, and, and it's found in Mark chapter 3 and verse 25. We're going to uh, begin reading there uh, at, at something that Jesus says, and, and I think it wise to uh, take a closer look at it this morning and, uh, and understand just a few things, and then uh, we'll cut out of here and, and, and go farther, okay? Uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 25, I'm just going to read to you one verse. The Bible says this in the words of Jesus, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Let us pray. Father God, we come to You this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank You, God, and praise You. 
uh, for your many blessings upon us, God. We thank you, Lord, for those that have came uh, this morning and laid their burdens down at this altar. God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for those that have been obedient to your Spirit. God, those that have given testimony, read Scripture, and sang songs. Uh, Father God, we know this morning that you've laid this message on our heart for just such a time as this. And, uh, and Father God, I ask you to get me out of your way, Lord, this morning and speak through me the words that this congregation needs to hear. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanksgiving for it is in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Uh, Mark 3, 25, Jesus says, And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Now this morning I want to uh, uh, leave with you something and I want you to understand something uh, uh, about this. We have never lived in such a time as what we live in right now. Uh, our nation is divided. It, it is uh, uh, the only other time in history where we've seen the United States as divided as what it is right now was the time during the Civil War uh, uh, when, when uh, some states succeeded from the Union. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you this morning as we turn on our news and, uh, and we look at the, the way uh, that, uh, that the world is right now. There, there's those that are on the left and there's those that are on the right and they just can't seem to get together. There's gridlock in Washington. They can't get nothing passed through. Uh, they're, they're arguing and fussing at each other all the time. And this morning, let me say that, that that has trickled down out of Washington and it has trickled down out of our society and it has infiltrated our homes. Amen. And it's not only infiltrated our homes in the sense of the, the world around us, but it has also infiltrated the homes of those that claim the name of Christ and those that uh, uh, are, attend church on a regular basis. Uh, let me say this this morning, uh, uh, as, we, as we think about that, uh, I want to say that this morning beyond a shadow of a doubt and as a fact of Scripture, that if your home is divided, it's not going to be a heavenly home. Uh, a home that is divided when the, when there's division among a husband and a wife to the uh, to the point that 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 uh, that this one's got to be right or this one's got to be right and and, and they they're they're pulling in two opposite directions and uh, two total different directions. Uh, then let me tell you this morning, you've not got a heavenly home. Uh, now I may be speaking this morning to those that are going through marital problems, and if you are, I pray for you. God bless you and I'll be more than happy uh, to, re, uh, to meet with you and talk with you. Uh, but this morning, I, I want to say this, a house that is divided cannot stand and, and it's not going to be a heavenly home. Amen. Amen. I've, I've talked with uh, parents of children where their children are divided against their parents. That's taught in our schools today. Uh, the, the, the disrespect and the disobedience of parents is not of God. Period. What we need right now, and, and y'all, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, what we need right now is something that will bring those divisions together. I, I'm, I'm, t I'm speaking about the home, and I, I'm speaking about this country. Uh, I, I, I was watching the news the other day, the devastation that's taking place down in uh, Texas with Hurricane Harvey and, and all the flooding that's went on and, and, and all of those things. And uh, I heard one commentator say uh, that, that during this crisis and during this time uh, that there's been no white and there's been no black and there's been no Democrats and there's been no Republicans. There's just been people coming together. And uh, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. Ain't it sad in this day and time uh, that we got to get into a crisis before people can just say, you know what, I'm going to set my differences aside for just a little while and just be a person and just be a help to some. Somebody. Uh, this morning, I want to say that that, that in a in a home, if you've always got to be right, then you're wrong. 
in, 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 a, in a marriage, if you've got always, that, that's, that's one thing that me and Karen have struggled with because uh, she's a, 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 a donkey and, and I am too. We always got to get that last word. And, and, and I, I, I got to get the last word and then, then she got to get the last word and then if she's got the last word, I had not got the last word so I got to push it a little bit farther so I can get the last word. Do you know what really matters? It don't matter who's right or wrong. It don't matter who's, who's, who's went uh, uh, the right way in. And, and I'm talking about a marriage spat or something that, that goes on. I remember one argument that me and her had one time. Goofiest thing ever. Can't believe I'm telling you this. Uh, but I told her she could not pick out fresh bread. Telling you truth. She said, well, then you start doing the grocery shopping. And I said, well, what do you think I got you for? Well, I can't pick out the, the uh, good bread, she said. And, and it went on and on and on from there. And then by the end of the evening, she was mad at me and I was mad at her. And then I forgot. I thought, what was I mad at her for? <laughs> then I go and I pick up that loaf of bread and then I remembered. <laughs> and I thought, oh, because I didn't have supper that night, and I thought, <laughs> I'm going to make me a sandwich. <laughs> See how ridiculous that is? Amen. See how ridiculous that is? See, a lot of times we, we get divided, and, 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 and we start picking out faults, and we start picking out things about, about each other, when what we really need to do is just come together. Amen. What we really need to do is just, is just give in and just... Say, so, you know what, I, I want the same things you want. You know, I, I'll tell you this, uh, uh, you know, if, if Karen ever tried to leave me, I'd just get my hat and go with her. <laughs> and she knows that. See, we want the same things. We want to be in unified and we want to be together, but we also want to be right. And sometimes being right, we have to set aside so that way we can be unified and be together. That happens in a marriage sometimes. That happens sometimes in a home and sometimes among kids. And, 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 and adults, let me tell you this morning, and parents, let me exhort you this morning, you raise your kids right. The Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go and when he's old he'll not de depart from it. That doesn't mean that they're not going to argue and fuss and kick along the way, uh, but you're the parent. Uh, but sometimes it'd be good for, uh, for us as parents to, to just ease off and just sit back for just a little while and, 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 say, and, and listen to our kids, see where they're coming from, see what they're uh, talking about. And, but never, never uh, give up the place of, of being the adult. See, a lot of places that, that has reversed. The kids are the bosses, and the adults do whatever they say to do, and then that causes division among the home because that is not the way God lined it up to be. Amen. That is not the way God designed it to be. But Jesus said, if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. This morning I want to read to you uh, something I ran across this week in preparing for this message. Oil and water don't mix. This is exemplified in any bottle of salad dressing where things have settled and the oil and the water have separated. In order to bring that oil and water back together, the bottle must be shaken. However, the togetherness won't last forever. As soon as the bottle sits for a while, the ingredients will segregate again. They will go back to their own department. They will go back to their separate bedrooms. They will go back to their separate seating places. They will go back to their separate communities. They will go back to uh, to uh, they will go back to wherever they came from because that is just the nature of oil and water. They do not mix. But mayonnaise, I hate mayonnaise, by the way. Mayonnaise does not have to be shaken. 
even though that it is comprised mostly of oil and water. This is because mayonnaise also contains an emulsifier, egg. An emulsifier is that which brings things together that otherwise could never come together. In mayonnaise, the egg brings together two entities that would not normally mix with one another. The egg infiltrates both so that they are able to come together and be a solid substance. The cross of Jesus Christ acts as an emulsifier to bring people together even those who would not normally come together. You see the example this morning, you got oil on one side, you got water on the other side, you put them both together and one's going to separate from the other, they're going to go. But when you add the egg, the egg gets in the water, the egg gets in the oil, brings them both together and makes them a solid substance, an emulsifier. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ ought to bring us together in this fact. Because some of you this morning are oil, and some of you this morning are water. That's the naturalness of, of you and the person that you are, and you're different than everybody else around you. And, but you're more like this one than you are like that one, and you're more like this one than you are like that one. But see, there's something happens when we come together in a church. Because we're not coming together in a church for my glory. We're not coming together in a church for your glory. We're not coming together in a church so that way we can uh, lift up somebody. We're coming together in a church so we can lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever may divide us, the cross of Christ ought to bring us together. Whatever our personalities that may keep us separated uh, during uh, our walks of life, and uh, may it, it may uh, put us in one category, and somebody else is sitting in this place in another category. Oh, but when you get the cross, and you get the cross between the two, it can bring them together. See, when we walk inside of this church, I believe that there is no black and there is no white. I believe there is no Democrat, there's no Republican. Uh, there, there's nobody that, that is alone in this place because something has brought us together into this place that, uh, that wants to hold us together and wants to make us a solid substance. The Bible says of the church that upon this rock, I'll build my church. And you say, Brother John, what rock? And there in that passage of Scripture, Jesus is talking to Peter, and He asked Peter who you are, or who Peter says that Jesus is. He said, who do you say that I am, Peter? And he said, you are the Son of the living God. In your words are salvation. And Jesus says to Peter, He says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the reason being is because of that testimony, uh, the, the, the oil that was inside of, of Peter and the water that was inside of John brought them together. Amen. When Peter stood on the day of Pentecost and preached and 3,000 souls were saved, they wasn't saved because they all agreed on everything. They were saved because they agreed on the main thing. And that's that the Lord Jesus Christ was the Son of the living God and in His words were salvation. When they began to agree, I'm going to tell you something, the church was formed and the Bible says, Jesus says that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This morning, I'm going to say this to you. Uh, you may be a water this morning or you may be oil. Uh, you may not can get along uh, uh, in, in your mind with the person sitting next to you. Uh, but let me tell you this morning, if you've got the cross and 
and, and you've got the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ in your mind and, and you say my goal is to see somebody saved and somebody born into the kingdom of God bless God if that can't join us together they ain't nothing can uh, and if, they, if you can't come together this morning with the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, then this morning you can't come together for no other reason he say, but dead gummit, John, I'm right. Unify your marriage with the cross. Unify your marriage with the cross. You let, let Jesus get in the middle of your marriage, and you know what? Jesus will penetrate you, and He'll penetrate your spouse, and, and then He'll bring you together and make you a solid substance. But my kids are divided against me, Brother John. Let me tell you something. You get your kids uh, and you get the cross in your life and you let Jesus act as that emulsifier that will uh, bring the parents and, and penetrate the parents and then it will penetrate the kids and then it will bring them together and then you will have a heavenly home. Amen. But not before. Because a house divided cannot stand. A house divided cannot stand. Stand. May be the shortest message I've ever preached. I got some tickles, no amens, but anyway. This morning, I don't know what you may be up against in your home life, with your kids, some of you kids maybe with your parents. You just can't seem to get together with your parents. They just don't understand. And you know what? I was a teenager one time. I know how that is. When I was a teenager, my mama was the dumbest woman on planet Earth. It didn't take me very long after being a teenager to realize she was a whole lot smarter than I thought she was. Amen. But maybe for some of you kids, you, you feel like that your parents are against you. They just don't understand. Get Jesus in the midst. Amen. Let Him work on you. Let Him work on them. Let Him bring you together. Husband, wife, maybe you feel divided in your home. You're not, you're not enjoying a heavenly home because you're divided. Get Jesus in the midst of your home and in the midst of your marriage. Let Him act as that egg and that mayonnaise and bring the oil and the water together. This morning, I've got a whole plate full of crosses right up here. And like I said before, I do not know what you may be encountering. I don't know what you may be going through in your personal life. And you know what? It doesn't matter because God already does know. Amen. But I'm going to allow you the opportunity. I know we've already had an altar call and I appreciate that. I appreciate the move that we've had. We've had the altars fill up two or three times this morning. But I'm going to give you one more opportunity this morning and tell you this altar's open. And this morning, if you need to come and you need to get you across and say, you know what? I don't care if I'm right. I don't care if I'm wrong. I just want to be united. Amen. I'm going to encourage each one of you to come get you one. Get in this altar and say, Jesus, let this be a symbol of that I want you to be the egg that molds me with those that I don't normally agree with that puts me together with those that I normally would separate from. Jesus, I want you to be that egg. Take that cross and pray over that cross and hold that cross, keep it in your pocket. And every time that you say, man, you, you occur and it, something occurs in your marriage or in your home and you say, my goodness, I, I can't stand for this, I've got to stop this. Reach down in that pocket and pull out that cross. Say, Jesus, I need you to work on me. And I need you to work on them so we can be what you've called us to be. So you, we can be solid the way you want us to be. This morning, that's your message. The crosses are right here. 
Brother Eric, if you would, play us a song. together, Satan tries to divide. Amen. Anybody got anything they need to say or do this morning? Anybody? Amen. Amen. Bless you. So 
somebody else. Amen. Ain't nothing like it when Jesus shows up. Amen. This morning, I hope and pray uh, that this has been an encouragement to you. I know it's been an encouragement to me. Amen. Uh, and if you still feel divided in your marriage, in your home, you can get that fixed. Let me give you one more thing for those that are lost in the place and then I'm going to leave. I'm, I'm, we're going to close. This morning, your oil, or excuse me, your water, those of you that are lost are water. And the Holy Spirit is that oil. Amen. And you can't get to it. But if you let the cross of Jesus Christ multiply, it'll bring you together with that Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You won't never be the same. You won't never be the same. I thank you this morning for your time and attention. I look forward to seeing. I, I started to do something. I might as well just go ahead and do it. If you enjoyed this morning's message, I'm going to ask you back tonight at 6 o'clock. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say how much of you, how many of you enjoyed it. Say. <laughs> Tonight at 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to be winding up our, our series on uh, the end times, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to cover about a thousand and seven years tonight, but it's not going to take that long to cover it, okay? So uh, y'all come back tonight and uh, enjoy that time. You would. Charlie, come to the back door with me. Remember the Gideons uh, at the back door? Brother, you come with me. You come stand back here. Uh, they're going to have a plate back here at the back. If you haven't donated already, feel, feel like you need to, go ahead and do that. Uh, Wait, friend.